Let's go to the spawn and say, okay, let's, let's cancel this simulation. So we kill the controllers, which are quite a few. Okay, then we delete it. Whoops. Whoop. I deleted the, the light. Okay. Let's just relaunch again. That why that. By the way, when you work with chakras, it's highly advisable that you restart the simulations again because in gazebo sometimes is a bit. Uh, um, sometimes the macros doesn't. The macros are saved, and then when you load it again, it saves the old ones. So when you're debugging, it's a bit difficult to debug if you don't restart the simulation over and over again. But with ROS Development Studio, it's quite easy, so no problem with that. So we go here and we say, let's spawn number of tentacles. I don't know. Let's put, for example, um, eight tentacles, but we'll put uh, only five elements, for example. And then if we go to our common properties in the robots, let's change the dimensions, for example, the length of the body. Let's do it, uh, I don't know, like uh, one meter, I don't know, one meter. Uh, let's make it heavier, like 10 kilograms. And let's change the element radius to, let's make them thinner and longer or shorter, maybe. For example, like that. And these guys, let's put them like this also, so thin, sorry, uh, thin, yeah, thin like this, and like that, like this one, for example, and we'll change the mass to uh, 0 0.5, this, you won't see a lot of effect, also, if they move, maybe the inertia is also, obviously, it will change, but only changing these values, you will change the inertias of all the elements. So bear that into account. These are the formulas for inertias calculation in cylinders. And that's quite it, I think. Yeah, so now we go back. We go here and we spawn. Sorry, let's close this. And let's spawn a sentinel. It's generating the code. Spawning, activating all the controllers. Let me see. Oh, there we go. This is a good example. So what happened? We only have one, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, what happened here? So while it cancels, so the only thing that it's not automatic and that's a thing that you could do is if we go to Sentinels, well, we just added this ones. So this Tentacle 8 that was just generated here now and 7 were not added. So let's do this. 6, 7 and 8. I know I could do a script to do this, but it's just easier like this. Okay, let's just uh, respawn the simulation to be safe. There we go. So now we go here and we say, uh, sorry, I go to the shell and we spawn it again. Let's see if it works. Well, now let's see. There we go. So now we have a chubby, chubby sentinel here. Whoops, sorry. Yeah, there we go. And we can move it. Yeah, we can move it also. 
So the code of movement is around here. So move sentinel. And we have here the move sentinel. This one takes the number of tentacles and the number of elements for each tentacle. So in this case, to run it, so velocity and sentinel. Yeah, then script and let's see, Python, move sentinel, and then let's have a look. So it's the number of tentacles. So in this case, it's eight. And the number of elements, so in our case, it's five. So five elements. Let's hit enter. And there we go. <laughs> so they're curling around. Then back again. As you can see, because there's no gravity, inertia is really important. And you see they are colliding with, with each other and moving. Yeah, great. Okay, so how did it move? Let's leave it here, just moving. So how does it move? So again, because we have all these elements that repeat, we can't, it's, it's not viable or practical to do it one by one. So we have to do it with loops, with fours, with whiles, and do arrays and so on. So in this case, we initialize this class with number of tentacles and number of elements for each tentacle, and then we say move sentinel. And what it does is uh, send um, sign values. So that's why it oscillates from one direction to another. And so this is the one that moves. So it's really, really tiny and simple. Why? Because there's a four here for each one of the publishers. And we generate one publisher for each joint, of course. And we publish through to this um, topics, which um, let me let me show you. So ROS topic list, and as you can see, we have these, which is tentacle, then, so namespace tentacle, then tentacle eight, uh, joint four, the auxiliary in this case, and then the command. And we do this for each one of them, yeah? So here, we go here and we, in the initialize, we initialize a node, a ROS node, of course, and we initialize the variables, and then we initialize the, the publisher's array, which is this one. We use the namespace that we saw, tentacle, the ending, which is command, and then for each one of the tentacles and for each element, we change the name of the topic, so the auxiliary and the main, which is essentially the namespace, which is tentacle, then the base name, which is T, 1, T2, T3, T4, then uh, underscore, important, and then the number of joint, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the, the name of the joint, so auxiliary joint, or in this case, the controller. It's not the joint, but the controller for each one. And we do it in a loop until we finish. And that's it. That's how we move it. We end up this first part of the project here. The next part will be to add meshes, so make it look like this as much as we can. And also add some special stuff like the, the claws here and the claws around here, the eyes. If you go to the video here, I challenge you to do your version of this Sentinel or any crazy robot yet that you think of and post a video response on the comments of this video and I'll pick a winner and I'll announce the winner in the next uh, in the next videos okay
So good luck and have fun with robotics and do the most crazy robot that you can think of, okay? And see you in the next video, adding the meshes. If you like it, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and see ya, bye.